Good afternoon, everyone. It is time for another episode of Get to Know Them. I am so happy you're here. I am your host, Monica Graves. And for those of you who might be tuning in for the very first time, this is a talk show I created where I bring on people I know and love, their, especially their stories, and I hope that those stories are going to inspire you. So if they do, make sure you tell your friends about our show. You can tell two friends and they can tell two friends and so on and so on. How many of you remember that commercial? <laughs> anyway, I am so, so excited to introduce our guest today. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about our two show sponsors. So we do have two, and one is Brenda Badome, who is located here in, well, I'm in Burlington, but she is just around the corner in Toronto, Ontario, and she has the most beautiful clothing line for women. I'm wearing her blouse today. If you go to my social media, you can see the cool pants that I have on to go with the blouse and her whole um, line is all about a great fit and being comfortable. So make sure you check out brendabadome.com and use the coupon code get to know them for 22% off of your order. Our other sponsor is actually me. I am a jewelry designer. Uh, that's what I first started doing. And um, my company is Glam Jewels, G L A M J U L Z.com. And you can check out my website and get yourself some lovely jewels maybe something to go with your outfit from Brenda or something for Mother's Day whatever you need okay are you ready to in to hear all about our guest I cannot wait to introduce you to Tonia Evans Chanchuli we are going to have a wonderful discussion I'm going to read you her bio and you're going to get to know a little bit about her before I bring her on Newfoundland-born soprano, Tonia is a multifaceted concert artist and singer-songwriter. Tonia has been praised by CBC Newfoundland for exploring her rich Newfoundland roots. She has worked passionately to honor and revive the life and legacy of her muse, Newfoundland's Nightingale of the North, Georgina Sterling, who lived from 1867 until 1935. Also known to her international audience as Marie Toulingou. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, we'll have to ask Tonia. As an award winner, as an award winning author, Tonia celebrates the publishing of her debut book, The Heart's Obsession, an intimate biography of, of the Newfoundland songstress Georgina Sterling with Fr Flanker Press Limited and co authored with, are you guys ready for this? She co authored her book with her grandfather, veteran Newfoundland author Calvin D. Evans. In tandem with the book, she released two tribute albums that shine a spotlight on two of the province's most talented musicians, Georgina Sterling and the late folk hero Ron Hines. Most recently, Tonia released Thousand Cries and her original song, Churchyard Roses, went to number five on the East Coast Top 30. Amazing! Tonia's album, Hymns of the Heart, was released during the global pandemic, a project that brought her great peace during an uncertain time. Her album, Love Me Till I'm Again, features her own original music on her heart-related matters and expressions of beloved Newfoundland. Tonia is the visionary founder of a nonprofit organization, Wish Opera Arts, and is a fierce advocate for celebrating and nurturing Canadian artists of all genres as they achieve their individual artistic goal. She is the proud chairman of the board with Southern Ontario Lyric Opera in Burlington, Ontario. I am so excited to chat with Tonia. She is an amazing Canadian talent, and let's not wait another moment. Here she is. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Tonia. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, girl, your bio is just like amazing. I I want to dive into all of your adventures and you're incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So, Tonia, on the show, the first question I always ask my guests is for you, what did little Tonia want to be when she grew up? Oh, okay. Um you know, I, I, I just always, I wanted, always wanted to be a singer. Um, at first I thought a pop singer, but just always wanted to be a singer performer and a mom. 
So, um, yeah, that all, I, I started singing at a very young age um, in church and school. And then it wasn't until about, I would say grade eight, uh, I sang for my uncle Brian in his living room, downtown Toronto. I sang Wind Beneath My Wings by Bette Midler. And uh, he, he said, you have a voice that should be classically trained. And I was absolutely against that in the moment, but I really opened my mind and, and listened to all the music that he shared with me. And I, I fell in love with opera and that, that became the, the beginning of my path in, in, in opera in particular. Wow, and that's thanks to your uncle. Yeah, it's, amazing. it's just amazing the influence you can have on a young person's life. And so yeah. he was certainly one who influenced me greatly in the, 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 the path of, of my life. That's incredible. So did you grow up in Newfoundland, Tonia, or is that where your family is from? Um, I was born in St. John's, Newfoundland, and we okay. have family all across Newfoundland. We go back probably once a year since, uh, since we left. I was quite young when we moved. Um, but we go back every year, especially since I started um, doing concerts and, and starting to write the book on Georgina Sterling. Yeah, great. So I'm curious to know, um, what, as a young girl, like getting into opera, how did that even happen? Like, how, did you were you taken to a concert or how did this um, come to well, be? So that, so that night that I sang Wind Beneath My Wings, my uncle sent me home with a classical CD and said, you know, just take a listen to this. And honestly, I wanted to chuck it out the window on the car ride home. <laughs> and my yeah, mom, I was going to say, like, what were you listening to at that time before your uncle introduced just, you to this? Yeah, I was just listening to, like, whatever regular pop all the other teenagers were listening yeah. to. And right you know, my mom just said, give it a chance. And I did. And he would take me to the opera. He would buy me sheet music. He would, um, you know, ask me to sing specific pieces at Christmas parties or other events that he would have at his home. He was, he was a volunteer for the Canadian opera company and collected antiques. Like he just was so wonderfully cultured. And so he really, you know, opened that world to me we would sit and we would listen to listen to records of maria callas together and she is like the diva that just was like the nail in the coffin for me it was like i'm in <laughs> wow i want to be her <laughs> um yeah so, the, yeah so that's how it all started and and you know he said like go and find a classical singer in your in 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 your area where we lived in the greater Toronto area. And I started taking classical voice lessons. I went to the University of Western Ontario for voice performance and there you go. <laughs> wow. Now, do you remember the first opera you ever saw? Um, oh, you know, I think it was probably, um, it was actually, it was, um, uh, I believe it was the Magic Flute by Mozart. It was definitely a Mozart opera. And um, it was very, very long, <laughs> but just the whole um, process and experience of going to the opera. We went for a beautiful dinner beforehand downtown, and then we went to the Four Seasons um, for to see the opera. And it was just so like luxurious and and breathtaking. Like it was um, amazing. Oh, amazing. And at what point did you sort of visualize yourself on stage like that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was shortly around that time, like the first sort of public performance I had doing classical music was he asked me to learn a few pieces for a Christmas, um, a Christmas party he was having at his home. And, and one of them was Ave Maria. And while that's not opera, it is certainly classical. And so I had to learn Latin and work on learning how to sing that in um, a classical way with proper technique. And um, yeah, and so once I sort of had that experience of like getting all dressed up for this party and performing and, and hearing and feeling the feedback that I got from people, it was um, just a really special moment of like, I, I think I can do this and I, I love doing this. So um, 
yeah, I just, everything I did then was about pursuing that, um, I guess that, that life training, yeah. you know, educating right. myself, reading books on world famous opera singers, that kind of thing. Yeah, amazing. So that brings us to Georgina Sterling, who I had never heard of before I read your bio. And then I went online and did a little sleuthing, but I, I would love to know what, tell us about her and why her? So um, another family influence of mine has been my grandfather, Calvin. And I think that I was in grade nine or 10, um, maybe a bit older, when he gave me the first very small book that was written on her by Amy Louise Payton. And it had like this sort of just law brown cover on it. And, um, you know, sort of black and white picture of her. And I just put that book on the shelf. I was like, thanks, but mm, this is not really piquing my interest right now. And then it wasn't until I think 2017 on New Year's, right after New Year's, I had a conversation with my cousin Jody on Facebook and we were just talking about like, you know, like, what do you want for yourself this year? What are you up to? And she said, you know, you really should explore your Newfoundland musical roots more. And I, I had no idea what that was going to look like, but I remembered that book and I took it off the shelf and I read it in like a day and I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, how did I not read this sooner? I feel so embarrassed. I should know this. I'm from Newfoundland and I'm a singer too. And so much of her repertoire lined up with repertoire that I had sung. And she was really big on singing concerts and churches and stuff like that too across Newfoundland when she was home from her international training and performing. So um, I just started planning a concert program based on the music that we shared together and writing sort of interjections on her, you know, the arc of her career. And I picked up the phone and started calling churches in Newfoundland saying, I'm coming home for a family trip this fall. Um, you know, I would really love to present this concert. I'm not charging. I just want to educate people on this woman. And so they were like, okay, of course, we'll, we'd love to have you here. So yeah. when I, uh, sorry, you might hear my dog growling a bit. That's okay. <laughs> That's but um, when I when I was there performing one of the concerts, a friend that my mom had gone to school with um, who worked in the archives at the Queen Elizabeth Library in St. John's, he told us that um, a folder of files and music and letters had recently been brought into the library from some distant family members um, and, you know, invited us to come and look look through those files to, you know, read some of her handwritten letters and stuff. So my grandfather and I went, we were like, my grandfather was like a kid in a candy shop because he's a big history buff. He's written lots of books on Newfoundland history and shipbuilding and all kinds of things. So we were sitting there in the library. It was so quiet. And we we're like, I'm holding this letter from her that was so old. And he said, I think we need to write the definitive biography on Georgina Sterling. And, you know, do you, would you want to do this project with me since you're already performing the concerts on her? And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> little, oh did my I gosh. Know, little did I know how much work it was going to be. It was crazy amount of work, but it was such a thrilling journey and project with him. Oh my gosh, Tony, yeah. what a gift to be able to do something like that with your grandfather. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Here's, here's the book. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful book. Yeah, it doesn't have a brown cover. No. <laughs> you didn't go for that, eh? Yeah. Picture of my grandfather and I on the back here. <laughs> oh, that's so He's lovely. He's such a sweetheart. He just turned 92. <laughs> wow. So how old amazing. was he when you two wrote the book together? Um, so we... The book came out in 2019 and we did a big sort of book tour and concert tour. And I had those albums released at the same time. So that was um, 2019. And um, I don't know, do the math. He had, he, he was like yeah. late, late eighties. Late eighties. Good for him. My yeah. goodness. That is so great. I love that. It was really wow. so cool. Yeah. 
So in your like in your journey of writing this book, did you did you connect with any of Georgina's family? Like, are there descendants in Newfoundland that? There, yeah, there are a few, and um, there were a few people we connected with that that were very old who actually used to go and like help cut the grass or you know tend to their chickens and whatever in Twillingate. Um, and then it was funny because. Once people knew we were doing this project, you know, because I would post frequently about it on Facebook, I would have people just coming out of the woodwork on Messenger, sending me messages saying, you know, we have this thing that belonged to her or, um, you know, I'm this distant relative and, you know, all, all, all kinds of things. Um, uh, my friend Von Harbin, we've become very close. Um, it was his great aunt, I believe, who was Georgina Sterling's best friend. And we met up and he gave me a very old piece of sheet music that belonged to Georgina called The Holy City, which is one of my favorite pieces to sing. And so it was just this like two year time period of like all these amazing synchronicities and coincidences and just information coming in from all areas that we were able to just plug dates in and, and figure out, you know, the exact timeline of her life and her performing and all that kind of stuff. So it was really, really thrilling. I just felt like such a geek at that time. I was just like, Ooh, research. <laughs> oh, no kidding. It's fascinating. So are, do you, do, do you have any plans to, I like, I don't, she's from Twillingate, you said, right? Yes. So she was from and, Twillingate and, and that's where yeah. she went home to, to die and live the rest of her life teaching and she had an amazing rose garden she would bring roses to people in the hospital and um um i i've gone pretty much every year since 2017 to do performances in twillingate on her life and i'm getting ready right now to do um i'll be performing three times within a week there in june i'm i'm doing a, a performance for the, the high school actually this time because the the principal had me in last year and and the kids just loved learning about her and um you know she told she told me that they the kids were just you know usually they're like on their phones and she's like you have them captivated like please come back and do a concert um so that's what i'm doing in june i'm doing a concert for the school i'm doing a concert that it's the 50th anniversary of the twillingate museum where a lot of georgina sterling's clothes and artifacts are so I'll do a, a concert at the church there in honor of the museum. And then at um, the Blue Barrel um, Gallery and Cafe, I'll do a, a program of slightly more like folk folk music. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. So, Tanya, I know not to give the book away because we want everybody to read it. But, <laughs> but uh, can you share like sort of some of the highlights personally for you, like discoveries you made about her where you were really like, the, you know, you had that connection was really obvious or. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's, there's parts of the book that are, you know, really research dense, but then there's parts like we sort of divided the book up. My grandfather wrote on like the, the history and the dates of her travel and that sort of thing. And I wrote more about her repertoire, her personality, her, her performing career. And um, I, when I first went to Twillingate while we were writing the book, um, I just, I included sort of sentimental and synchronistic stories in the book too, just to really give people more of like a connection to her. I didn't want it to be like a typical boring biography or something. So one of the really cool things that happened um, when I was there doing research and concerts, I went to the cemetery where she is and the whole town after she passed had combined money to erect this gorgeous um, headstone in the shape of a cross with all her titles and, and everything on it. And so the first time I went to the cemetery, it's on the ocean. You walk through these double white gates and my mom grabbed my arm right before we were going to walk through the gates. And she said, Tanya, look. And I looked down at the ground right in the middle of the gates where the gates met. And it's like this perfect heart shaped rock. Oh, and my I gosh. looked at hearts everywhere. So it was 
it was like almost like a sign from her, like welcoming, yeah. you know, welcome and and thank you for, you know, preserving my my legacy and my name and yeah. performing in the church there where she had performed herself was like a thrilling experience for me. So um, I what I really loved learning about was, you know, the fact that she was this young girl in a fishing village so long ago when, you know, your main goal would be to help your parents on the property and, and get married and have babies. And she was cleaning fish and like just in it all, you know, but she mm. had this dream to be an opera singer. And luckily her father had the means to send her to um, Toronto actually for some voice training first. And then she went off to Europe to train in Paris and Italy. And so just being in Twillingate and seeing that beautiful quaint town and knowing that she would have gotten on a ship there and left her home behind her and taken this long ride, boat ride to Italy, yeah. just to see what happens and train and, and see where her dreams will take her was just really incredible you know, just thinking back then at that time that, you know, she had the guts to do that. And she was a trailblazer in my mind, you know? Exactly. My gosh, that's, yeah, how amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. It's hard to comprehend what that would have felt like, hey? Like going on yeah. that boat and like oh, yeah. I, in those days too, like I, like I don't even think these people knew if they'd be able to return. Like that's and that's know? the thing, you know. She would send these handwritten letters home to her father and update him on her training and what she was doing next. And I got to hold and read all those letters. I got to hold her um, opera scores, some of her, you know, classical music books, and it 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 was this very surreal experience. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and I'm sure quite a spiritual experience as oh, well. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. You, I think you have her DNA, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the line there. Somewhere along the lines in Newfoundland, everyone's related. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, um, so you're, I'm fascinated by your music videos. They are like incredible um where do you shoot them everywhere or do you are you like focused um, on newfoundland or um well you know certainly some of them were filmed in newfoundland right in twillingate yeah. where she was born um yeah and so that was really really special to be able to do that and uh, i met a really great guy by the name of julian earl who is a drone artist and he he filmed the footage for me. And um, so that really, I think that really just helped tie the music in and, and just make it more relevant for the time that we're living in, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, the video that I did recently, I filmed it on the beach here in Florida where we stay. Um, that was a special one. I mean, I just try to, I don't have like too, too many videos, but I try to just yeah. make them unique as much yeah. as I can. <laughs> Without blowing a crazy budget. <laughs> yeah, of course. You got to be mindful of that. You know, it just blew my mind that you said, you know how we think about like the jobs that were available to us growing up and now yeah. how the world has opened up. When you just said drone artist, I I'm know. like, what? That's a job. That's a career. It's drone yeah, artist. It's really That's so crazy. wild. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Good. So how do you keep within a reasonable budget with shooting music videos? Because I know they can get crazy, but, you know, your videos yeah. are so beautifully polished and it looks like you got Thank like. You. Well, a, I mean, yeah, like I don't know. Like, I, I think I just I've been lucky and blessed to just have come across the right people at the right time who are really also invested in what I'm doing, like in terms of the message you know, it was like for the, for the videos that would have anything to do with Georgina, it was like Julian is from Twillingate as well. And, you know, that's like obviously important history for him. So he was on 
board and very, very fair with his rates. And um, uh, oh gosh, what was I going to say? I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> But yeah, so, so, and then even the video that I did with my daughter for Thousand Cries, you know, the, the, the messaging and the theme is, is a lot around um, mental health and being supportive and like just, you know, getting through those, those lows. And um, so the people that I just connected with by God, was like yeah. you know they were so interested in the message too and it was like let's really work together to to produce something that's really special and poignant but that's not gonna you know break the bank <laughs> yeah that's so great yeah so tonia when when you look at mental health and like you know the last few years have been really hard on people of all yeah. ages what it what's sort of speaking to you in your heart where you you know you want to help to heal people or what sort of messaging is important for you to get out there um yeah i mean growing up i certainly struggled with anxiety and waves of depression um and i have two teenagers right now who who go through their own are going through their own journeys and i think now especially in this day and age life is very um, overstimulating and, and tricky to navigate, especially for teens, um, with social media and that sort of thing. And there's not as much of a stigma anymore around mental health and getting, you know, a therapist or the help that you need. And so I think that, I think that my, my mission is just to let people know that, it's okay to not be okay and to rely on your family and friends and to ask for the help that you need instead of thinking that you have to sort of white knuckle and, and get through it on your own. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm doing my master's in counseling psychology right now. And I'm realizing that I, that I really do have a passion for helping teens and, um, and women, uh, moms in particular. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, wow. I just, I feel like I'm just always trying to learn as much as I can to equip myself with tools that I can either help myself with or family and friends, my children, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. You're creating a safe space for people. Yeah, yeah. it's really yeah. important, especially since you, you said, you know, especially through the pandemic, um, a lot has changed and it was a really challenging time for a lot of people to go through, especially teenagers with, you know, online schooling and, and all of that uncertainty and, you know, probably on their phones a lot on social media. And then the whole comparison game you play yeah. in your head, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really challenging. I think, social media can be a blessing. It can also be a curse. So you really need to learn mm -hmm. the responsibility of it and have boundaries in place so that you can keep it at a healthy um, level in your, in your life, you know? Yeah, that's great. How do your kids feel about that when you talk about boundaries in terms of social media? Yeah. I mean, my, uh, my son is on social media the odd time, but he's not crazy about it. My daughter was on social media, but she's gotten completely off of it now um, okay. because she's a real reader. She reads a lot and she's read books on the damage that social media can do, especially when your brain is young and still developing. And so she's gotten completely off of it. And she's notices that she's actually just much happier not being on it, which wow. feels good. Great for me as a mom to hear that, you know, and, and in my, in my own life, my, dog, my son came to get the dog in my own life. I try to like, I want to have a presence on social media for my music and just whatever sort of positivity or, or support that I can put out there. But I also, it is also for me about setting boundaries. You know, you can just find yourself mindlessly scrolling all of a sudden and wasting time and, and you get off and you're like, why do I feel so like, stuck or yucky right now and it's yeah. like 
Yeah, it's so amazing. And it, it always blows my mind how how it's such a time sucker. Like oh my you God, feel yeah. like you've been on for five minutes and then it's like 40 minutes is gone and you know it's really detrimental. And then you know, the minute you put the phone away and say that's it, I'm not looking at it all weekend, the weekend feels like it's two weeks long, you know. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, I mean, I really notice. I just start, I really try to pay attention where it's like, if I find I've kind of gone down that rabbit hole and lo lost a lot of time, I just sort of say to myself, like, oh my gosh, I could have practiced. I could have done some writing. I could have gone for a workout. I could have, you know, so learning what your priorities are and putting those in place yeah. first and then, okay, you know what? I'm going to give myself a half an hour to just see what everyone's up to and whatever you know? Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. I always find the downtime of the day. I'm like, okay, tonight I'm going to read a book. And then I pick up the phone. Oh my I'll God. I know I'm guilty of that. So bad. <laughs> I'm like, I really want to read. So tell us about Wish Opera Arts. Yeah. So Wish Opera yeah. was like years ago, I had actually done some full scale producing of operas and concerts that featured Canadian singers, Canadian fashion designers and artists. And, and that was just like, not only a huge time investment as a mom with young kids, opera is a very expensive art form to produce. Um, and since I have always been interested in sort of psych psychological and behind the scenes aspects of being an artist and a performer, um, I developed Wish Arts where I created um, courses and sort of mentorship for artists on dealing with things like negative inner chatter, imposter syndrome, that sort of crash that you get after you've been really working on a show or a project where all of a sudden you've got nothing going on and then you feel like almost depressed, like, like well, I have nothing going on right now. I must be worthless, you know, like a lot of issues like that that are you know in particular for artists so um yeah it's just sort of something that i always chip away at and just help people That's along amazing. the way whenever i can you really you really hit the nail on the head with that one we actually have a joke my husband and i when i'll i'll say i'm so down today and he goes oh is that because this is over now like i either yes. had some exhibit or whatever or some kind of a gathering something that elevated me and yes. made me feel like I was contributing. Yes. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> and he always knows like, and I, you know, I, yeah, getting in tune to that is so important that. Yeah. You know, I, just... I call it a uh, postpartum creative depression. It's real. Oh my God. I love that. Tonya. So yeah. Real. You know, yeah. like if you, let's say you're um, a musical theater person and you just finished a show run. You, you're you're literally grieving the process the, you're in a grieving process that that that's over you're grieving the loss of that in your life it took up so much time and energy it fed you creatively and then it's over so I and I felt like I felt like that after the book had came out and the concerts and the book signings were done I feel like that after concerts um CD releases like anything like that because it, it, it's like a birthing process, you know, yeah. your, your, your whole heart and soul is in it. You put so much time and effort into it. It's like your baby and then it's over and you feel like, oh, that's it. Like I worked for six months for this concert. I wore the gown for an hour and now it's over. <laughs> no kidding. My God. So how do you, how do you get through that? And what do well, you tell other people to do? You know, I always try to have multiple projects going on all the time. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's not good because you really do need a break at times. Um, but so that, I mean, that helps me, but also just realizing when something is done, like I'll journal about it or write, you know, all the things that I learned throughout that process and stuff, how it helped me grow. But then also just realizing that there is so there's so much value in the downtime after, you know, it's like the seasons there's, there's time for death, like yeah, hibernation, cocooning, gaining your strength, 
getting, gaining um, inspiration from things. And then there's time to plant those seeds and then there's time for harvest. So I feel like if we look at it in that sense, then it's, it's easier on us. It's like, what, what phase am I in right now? And to just be in it and, and just like luxuriate in it. Like, even if it's the downtime, it's like, no, this is good for me. This is part of the process. I need this now so that the next project that comes up, it's like, you know, it's a cycle. Like you have to yes. go through that cycle. So that sort of helps me, I guess, reframe yes. it in my mind. I love that. I'm going to be using that. Thank, Thank you. you. That's so good. It's such a good idea for creatives. I think this is the first conversation I've ever had about that topic specifically. Like, oh, it's, nice. You know, yeah, yeah, I think that's so great. Thank wow. You. So, Tony, of all of the places where you've performed, is there anywhere that's like your ultimate, I want to be on that stage? That <laughs> you're... <laughs> um, I mean, I, I definitely love, I definitely love performing with orchestra. It's a thrill. And, you know, some of my favorite, one of my like most favorite was like, you know, at Casa Loma when they do the summer concert series and it's just such a beautiful night and the, you're performing with orchestra and, um, and other, you know, I've, I've performed um, with the last year I performed with the Cambridge symphony and the Burlington opera orchestra, things like that. I find those are very thrilling, but then I do also really, really cherish, um, you know, the sort of the more smaller, more intimate concerts in like the gorgeous churches, whether it's in Newfoundland or Toronto, wherever, I I just have such a, it's a very different feeling. It's more of like a spiritual feeling, like you're um, experiencing it with the audience and not just sort of performing for them. It's like you're, you're collectively having this experience together um, and realizing the power and the messages of the music together. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So what, what are your plans for this year? What have you sort of got on the go? I know you said you're going to be going in June to Twillingate. Yeah, so in June yeah. I'll be in Twillingate and doing um, mm -hmm. a few performances. I hope to film another video while I'm there for uh, a new song that I wrote about Georgina. And um, in the next month or so, I was hoping it would be ready in time for Mother's Day, but I didn't want to push it. Um, I have a book coming out that I wrote for young children called flick your heart light on let your fears be gone and um i then my daughter did all of the illustrations for it so it was a real collaborative project and um we're just sort of going through the editing process with that right now so i'm i'm really excited about that oh that's so exciting wow <laughs> yeah. what a great title for a book thank you it's, from, it's a line from a, a dance song that i recorded years ago and, and I was like, you know what? I love this line. And I think it's yeah. such a, a catchy and, and like, just right to the point, like it's, it's, it's easy enough for children to remember and think of, you know, when right. you're feeling fear or, or sadness, like we all have a light inside of us that it's like, you know, the clouds are covering the sun up. You can't, you know the sun is there, but you can't see it, and you just worry that it's never going to come out. And it's like, how do you keep that light going inside of you when you're feeling that way? And it's, you know, a lot of it comes down to sharing your gifts and talents with other people, being there for other people, and just being love. You know, no matter what yeah. your life's purpose is, we all have a purpose, I think, to be love for one another and for ourselves. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that birthing that project oh, next. <laughs> I think this is going to be a great book for all ages it sounds yeah, like. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much, you know, about like healing the inner child and therapy oh, now. And yeah. Thank absolutely. goodness cuz yeah, we we have to become parents for ourselves, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, what back when we were kids um and even further back there wasn't this access to resources and support like there is right now. And you just sort of did the best that you could and you didn't know, am I, 
is this messing up my kid or, or this traumatic yeah. thing happened, but how do I deal with it in the best way so that it, they don't carry it with them the rest of their life. And now we're in a time of like, oh my God, like you can look anything up on the internet. And so it's just like, obviously information that I've learned along the way from reading things, but also things that I did myself that, that helped me through ch challenging times. And, um, yeah, so it, I, I I hope that it will be a, a nice resource for, um, for yeah. parents and for kids. That's wonderful. Have you explored the Audible thing? Like, would you ever? Uh, like, I haven't actually yet. Audible? Yeah. But I would yeah. definitely like. Yeah, I mean, once the the book is actually out, I would actually definitely look into recording. Because it's not that yeah. long of a book, but to record it and maybe right. set it to some, some of my own music in the background or something like that. We'll see. Yeah. I, I was even thinking of your other book. I don't know if you're, you and your grandfather could could do something together. But I was thinking when I was reading about him being the co-author, I thought, oh, I'd love to hear the two of them together. Like, yeah, we've done, yeah we've done talks yeah. and stuff together. And it's always, everyone always says that it's just so special and we just have this really tight bond and we just sort of like the conversation between us just flows. They love watching and listening to us. So I don't know, at 92, yeah. I don't know if he's up for a project like that, but, <laughs> but I'm grateful yeah. that I got what I did and that I, that I had those experiences with him. Yeah. Wow. What a great, I, I just think that's amazing. Your friend, Joanne Evans just came on and said, awesome, Tonya with a big heart. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is great. I wanted to ask you um, if you could have, if I could grant you three wishes or <laughs> if three wishes could be granted to you, what would your three wishes be? I know it's uh, putting you on the spot now, but. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, that's a hard question. Like I really do. Yeah. I really feel blessed in the life that I have. I mean, I think maybe like any artist or musician, they, they want their music to be even more accessible or more heard by a broader audience would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, oh my gosh. Girl, so you put me on the spot. It's like all I day know, long, I like, think of wishes I want. And then you ask me, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It can be, it can be about anything. It can even be about somebody else or a or a large group of people or anything. Um, I feel like you're making a lot of wishes come true. So <laughs> thank for you. other people. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I, I think my, my wishes are, are on the simpler side. Like I just wish for my children that they grow up and are healthy and, and have a real sense of self-love for themselves. Um, and that they find their true calling in life and succeed at that. Um, and, uh, perfect health. I mean, health is something that I think we all take for granted until we're not healthy. And then we realize, yeah. so, um, yeah, more, I guess on the simple side then, I mean, I would love, I would love actually to perform this music with the Newfoundland symphony. I think that that would be, um, a real, um, incredible experience. So, um, I'm reaching out to them. We'll see what happens, but that would definitely be an amazing wish come true uh, in terms of my career. That's for sure. Oh, that's great. See, your wishes are perfect. <laughs> and you know what you said about your kids. It's so, it's, that's a big, a, amazing wish because, you know, yeah. even for our generation growing up, like we didn't think about that stuff. Like we thought about, I could, you know, I'm going to go to school and I got to get a yeah. good job. And I, it's very like, I don't know, not robotic, but you know what I mean? Like you don't, it, it, I think it's so wonderful when kids now have parents who are like, like get in there. Like, what is it you want? Like yes. what's lighting you on fire? Let's work with that. Not, you know, like, you got to get a good pension and a full time yeah, job. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, because that really does have a huge impact on your mental health and your your just overall happiness and satisfaction in life is if yeah. you can do something that you really love. And so I know my kids are both really great at lots of things. Um, but I, I, you know, I hopefully that throughout their own journey, they land on something that um, fuels their heart and soul, their creativity, their passion, and that also, you know, helps them earn a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that'll people. just, yeah, that'll be, that'll come as a result of them following their heart. Yeah, absolutely. Right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm a yeah. huge advocate, obviously, of following your heart. I mean, I believe that that's what Georgina Sterling did. I believe that that's what I've been doing my my life throughout my career. And I I do have an obsession with following with finding heart rocks and shapes. And and it to me, it's just a sign that I'm on the right path. I'm following my heart. I'm taking the right steps. And you know, things just fall into place naturally without having to force. Um, yeah. And just, you know, when all those synchronicities and stuff start happening, that's a sign to me that that I'm on the right path and God has his hand on my life and that sort of thing. Oh, that's beautiful. Tonya, you've been such an inspiration. Thank, Thank you, so, you much so much for much, coming Monica. on. I really appreciate yeah. I really appreciate it. Oh, good. I've loved having you on. I'm going to put you in the virtual green room and I'll be right back to you. In awesome. Just a sec. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh my gosh, is she amazing? I feel great after talking to Tonia. So uh, thank you so much for being here today. If you happen to be watching this interview on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, and uh, you'll be updated with uh, interviews weekly. You can go back. I've interviewed, I think, almost 100 uh, awesome people now. So check out the interviews. Thanks for being here. Make sure to go see our sponsor, Brenda Badome at brendabadome.com and uh, my business, Glam Jewels, G L A M J U L Z.com. Grab yourself some lovely jewels and keep on showing the world your sparkle. Thanks for being here.